They found him with little difficulty. Fushiguro, there's Gojo. Yes, I see. When they spotted Gojo this time, he was eating a crepe as he walked. Judging by the paper wrapping, the crepe was from a well-known shop facing a main street. It was a sizable creation, with whipped cream, tiramisu, macaroons, and even chocolate drizzle. Gojo was a six-foot-two adult, munching on what looked like a child's dream confection. I'm impressed, Fushiguro, Itadori said. I wouldn't even know how to order that. Who would want to? Maybe it's some kind of jujutsu training? How nice it would be if we could power up that way. The two kept their distance as they followed the guy gobbling a crepe. Even on the main streets of Akihabara, they must have stood out. Before long, Gojo finished his crepe and stopped in front of a sorely run-down shop. Itadori read the sign above the shop door. Vacuum Tube Specialty Shop. Gojo pondered for a moment, then stepped into the cluttered establishment. He has some unusual interests, Fushiguro said, looking perplexed. Itadori cocked his head. I've heard of vacuum tubes, but what are they? They're uh, a piece of electronics from old radios and audio equipment. Is Gojo-sensei an audiophile? No, Fushiguro said. He seems more like the kind of guy who listens to music on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I bet you're right. As Itadori and Fushiguro were talking, Gojo came out of the shop holding a paper bag. Apparently, he had purchased something. Uh-oh, we're losing him. With Fushiguro in tow, Itadori turned down an alley, following Gojo. They were slow enough to respond that they couldn't see Gojo at that point, but within seconds, they spied a tall figure in black amidst the crowd. There he is, Fushiguro. Gojo sensei's hard to miss. He's huge. Yeah, he's over six foot. He'd rule on a basketball court. Although I can't imagine him playing basketball. Fushiguro said. Me neither. Having reached agreement on this point, the two of them continued their pursuit. Following someone at a distance through the convoluted streets of Akihabara was arduous work. Gojo was tall, so his stride was long, and he walked fast. If Itadori and Fushiguro had stepped out of the crowd on the sidewalk, they would immediately have lost track of him. Gojo's next stop was a used music shop, where he perused vinyl records and paper jackets. Despite what you said, Fushiguro, Gojo Sensei may actually be a music geek, Itadori said. Nah, I doubt that. But he's looking at records. Bach, no less. Does that guy look like a guy who'd be interested in classical music? asked Fushiguro. Nah, more like alternative rock. Exactly, Fushiguro said. So this is definitely weird. After crate diving for a while, Gojo bought an LP of soundtrack music from an old foreign film and left the shop. Itadori and Fushiguro became increasingly suspicious as they continued tailing him. Momentarily, they started to believe that they may have misjudged Gojo, and that he really did have a taste for classical music. But they quickly came to their senses and dismissed the thought. Gojo moseyed along, then stopped in front of a shop with a yellow sign. Fushiguro, what kind of store is that? Itadori asked. It sells capsule toys, Fushiguro said. It's a gachapon shop. What? Stores like that exist? In Akiba, they do. Oh, okay. Oh, look, he's getting one! I really don't need to see one of my teachers buying a 500 yen capsule toy, Fushiguro said. But, uh, what machine did he choose? <laughs> it's keychains that all look like mushrooms. Realistic ones. If you're going to spend 500 yen, wouldn't it be better to get real mushrooms at the supermarket? <sighs> you don't understand, Fushiguro. Capsule toys are great because you never know what you'll get. I hope I never do understand that. Hey, he opened it. What'd he get? What'd he get? Itadori asked. It looks like he, uh, he got a poisonous mushroom. He doesn't seem pleased. <laughs> He can't eat that mushroom. You can't eat any of those mushrooms. They're toys. Gojo grumpily tucked the keychain into a pocket and resumed his peregrination. He went to a computer shop and fiddled with a mouse. 
then he went into an electronic shop and tried a massage device on his shoulders. <clears throat> they lost track of him for a bit before finding him again reading manga in the bookstore. Then he swayed down a side street to peruse used video games at a sidewalk sale. Apparently, he was going wherever his whims led. He doesn't appear to have any specific purpose, Fushiguro noted. Nope, doesn't seem like it. Itadori responded, now wearing toy goggles that claim to measure combat strength. Where did you buy those? Some secondhand shop. When I saw Gojo reading manga, I thought he might like these. Do you ever keep your wallet closed? Men splurge when something catches their eye, Itadori said. And that stupid game earlier caught your eye? Hey, Gojo went into a building, or rather, his key did. You don't need to rephrase that. Uh-oh, we're losing him. Come on, Fushiguro. Itadori took a step towards the building's entrance, but Fushiguro stopped him by yanking on the hood of his hoodie. This is dangerous, and you should never do it to your friends. No, 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 not so fast. Are you trying to kill me? Itadori demanded. What's the problem? Did we follow him all the way up here only to give up? Didn't you see the sign on the building? Huh? Itadori looked up and read the sign. Oh! Angel Maid Cafe. Mischievous Cupid. The second floor of the building was home to a cafe that catered to a clientele with specific tastes. It wasn't a lewd establishment, exactly. It was just a wholesome cafe where the servers dressed like maids. Going inside a place like that required a degree of fortitude, especially if you were a boy of a certain age. Even Itadori could feel his cheeks turning red. This is unexpected. Even for Gojo, he said. Maybe he came for these. Fushiguro pointed to several flyers posted on the wall advertising French-style pancakes to make even a patissier's mouth water. That made sense to Itadori. That must be it. He eats gobs of sweets. And he does indulge his sweet tooth more when he's going through an especially busy period. Well, we solved the mystery, so I guess we can stop following him. I'm too embarrassed to go in there. That's a smart decision, responded Itadori, for you anyway. Welcome, masters. The greeting, bright and eager, came from behind them, and both boys let out a sound of surprise. Neither Itadori's powerful physical instincts nor Fushiguro's polished curse detection skills had picked up on the approach of a veteran server. She was on the prowl for customers and had snuck up on the two boys. They may have looked hesitant to enter, but she knew a ripe source of income when she saw one. And that is the end of section four. Just a uh, just a quick recap. We currently have um, Gojo, the honored one. Yuji, the vessel for the fallen one. And Megami. The, uh, the shady one. All sitting down in a cafe. Being served by angels. Now, I simply refuse to believe that I'm the only one to peep that irony. Um, there's no way I'm the only one to peep that irony. See, I knew I wasn't. You see it too, don't you? Don't you? Don't lie to me. If you didn't, that's irony. And also maybe a plot thread. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, that's all for this one. See you in the next section.